Hey second grade, today we're going to continue with the wild robot and I thought I would change up the scenery a little bit and read to you in my living room. The last we left off, Bright Bill was asking Mama Roz about his original family and she was really honest with him. And Bright Bill asks, should I still call you Mama? And Roz says, I'm going to be your mama no matter what you call me. And Bright Bill says, we have a strange family, don't we? But I like it that way. One of the heartwarming parts of this book. So, let's get started. We're on chapter 43. A gosling takes off. It must be hard to have a robot as a mom. I think the hardest part for Bright Bill was all the mystery that surrounded Roz. Where she had come from, what was it like to be a robot? Would she always be there for him? And these questions filled the gosling's mind. And his feelings for his mother swung between love and confusion and even anger. I'm sure many of you know what that's like. Roz could sense that Bright Bill was struggling, and so she spent a lot of time talking to him about families and geese and robots. There are other robots on the island, said the gosling during one of those talks. He'd been sitting beside his mother in the garden, but now stood and faced her. Yes, there are others on the island, said Roz, but they are inoperative inoperative. For a robot, an inoperative is like being dead. Where are the dead robots? They are on the northern shore. I want to see them. I don't think that's a good idea. Why not? Well, you're still a gosling and you're too young to see dead robots. I will take you to see them when you are older. Mama, I'm not a gosling anymore. Bright Bill puffed up his chest. I'm already four months old. Now, we know as humans, that's not really that old. I'm sorry, said Roz, but you cannot go. Bright Bill stomped around the garden and squawked. This isn't fair. I promise I will take you to see them when you're older, said the robot. But I want to go now. Please calm down. You can't even fly. I could take off and you wouldn't be able to stop me. Please calm down. You can't even fly. I could take off and you wouldn't be able to stop me. It seems like Bright Bill should be saying that, but the way it's written, it seems like Roz is saying that. Roz stood. Her long shadow fell across her son. The gosling could feel his emotions swinging wildly, and for a moment he was actually afraid of his own mother. Without thinking, he sprinted towards the pond, beat his wings, and flew away. Chapter 44, The Runaway. Your son will be fine, said Loudwing. You know how they are at this age. I do not know, said Roz. Please tell me how they are at this age. Oh, right. Well, Bright Bill is growing up fast, and it's only natural for adolescent goslings to be a little, well, moody. He just needs to be alone for a while. You've raised a wonderful son. I know he'll come home soon. Try not to worry. But Roz did worry. At least, she worried as much as a robot was capable of worrying. Bright Bill had never run away or flown away, and suddenly Roz was computing all of the things that could go wrong. A violent storm, a broken wing, a predator. She had to find her son before something bad happened. There was only one place Bright Bill could have gone. The robot gravesite. So Roz galloped northward. She leaped over rocks and ducked under branches and charged through meadows without even slowing her pace. She raced all the way across the island until she finally stepped onto the sea cliffs above the gravesite. And there was Bright Bell, perched on the edge. He was looking at the robot parts scattered on the shore below, and his eyes were wet. What do you think that means, if his eyes were wet? What was he doing? 
He was crying. Don't be angry, she said to his mother, walked over. I am not angry, but you should not have flown off like that. You should have, you would have gotten hurt or worse. I was worried sick. I'm sorry, mama. It is okay, said Roz. It's only natural for goslings at your age to be a little, well, moody. Mama, I need to understand what you are. And I think it might help if I see those other robots. You're right, it might help. Why are you not down there? I was about to go, said Brightbill, but I got nervous. I want you to go with me. Let's go down there, said Roz, together. Chapter 45, The Dead Robots. Again, I know I've mentioned this before, but I think it's really interesting that Peter Brown refers to the robots as dead since they're not alive. Um, they can't really be dead, but I think that he refers to them as dead to give Roz this life-like quality. The gosling floated on the breeze beside his mother as she climbed down the cliffside. Down they went, past ledges and seagulls and tough little trees until standing on the rocky shore of the cliffs looming behind them. The gravesite had changed. Roz's crate was gone, lost to the weather or the waves. Some of the robot parts were gone too. Other parts were gritty with sand or were tangled in seaweed. All were inhabited by small, scuttling creatures. One smashed torso had the head and legs attached. Roz and Brightbill huddled around the corpse and studied the mess of tubes spilling out. This thing used to look like you, said Brightbill. Yes, we are the same type of robot, said Roz. And now this robot is dead? In a way, will you ever die, Mama? I think so. Will I die? All living things die eventually. The gosling's face scrunched with worry. Brightbill, are you going to live a long, Brightbill, you are going to live a long and happy life. Roz lay a hand on her son's back. You should not worry about death. The gosling's face relaxed, and then he pointed to a small round shape at the back of the robot's head. What's that? Roz leaned in closer. That is a button, which is a knob on a piece of machinery that can be pressed to operate it. Brightbill began pressing the button. Click, click, click. Nothing's happening, he said. Probably because the robot is dead. Click, click, click. Mama, do you have a button? Brightbill watched his mother's head turn around. And there was a small button. You've got one, he said. I've never noticed it before. Neither did I, said the robot. The gosling giggled. Oh, mama, you have so much to learn about yourself. Roz reached for the button on her head, but her hand automatically stopped before she could reach it. She tried it with the other hand, but it automatically stopped as well. It seems I can't press the button, she said. Would you like to try? What will happen, said Brightbill. I think that I will shut down, but I think you could simply press the button again to restart me. You think, squawked Brightbill. But what if you're wrong? What if you wake up different? What if you never wake up? Mama, I don't want to shut you down. Boys and girls, what do you think is going to happen? I mean, there's so many possibilities. Obviously, if Brightbill pushes this button in the back of her head, She's going to shut down. But do you think that her memory will be erased? I know in my experience that I shut down electronics um, to restart them. And usually whatever glitch or whatever is wrong will be fixed once it restarts. So I don't know about you. I mean, I've read the book before, so I know what happens. But I want you to wonder a little bit. We're a little short, so we're like nine and a half minutes. I promised you ten. But I'm going to stop there because this is like a cliffhanger. And in the next clip, I'll, we're going to see what happens. So if you want, you can go over to Flipgrid now and do a random share of what you think is going to happen when Brightbill presses that button. 
All right, I'll see you in a little bit. Bye.